everyone, and welcome to Art à la carte. In this video, I decided to do something a little bit more laid back, um, simply because the last video I did, which was the collaboration video with Catwalk, was pretty intensive, and actually I worked on it all week long, so I thought it'd be fun to do something a little bit um, not as intense. I did a small Q&A a couple weeks ago and asked for some questions and I was able to answer about four or five of those questions, but I received hundreds of them. So I thought that'd be kind of a fun thing to do is to kind of draw a picture and answer some of these questions while I'm doing that. So a question I get asked a lot is, do I have Instagram? Do I have Twitter? Do I have a DeviantArt account? Do I have a web page? Do I have an email? And so the answer is yes to pretty much everything. I even have a Snapchat, though I have never used it and I don't know how. Um, but I will leave links to my Instagram account, my Twitter, all of that, and even my DeviantArt account. I'll leave a link to that in the description box below. But just be forewarned, my DeviantArt account is really old and I don't update it very often. All right, so the questions I'm getting I had asked on my Instagram account, so let me go through and answer some of these questions. So Sinful Azril asked, while growing up, what or who inspired you the most? Art-wise, it would be a combination of Walt Disney, I loved anything Disney, but also Norman Rockwell and Escher were two huge artists that really super inspired me as a young artist in my art journey as I was beginning to discover that art was created by a person. And I just thrived and loved looking at their artwork. I also liked um, Monet as well. Yeah, so those were a couple artists that kind of influenced me, or at least inspired me, in the beginning of my art journey. Stacy K. Pix asked, how do you get ideas for your YouTube videos and how can you grow a smaller channel? Thanks. So to answer the first part of your question, a lot of my video ideas come from you guys. I always say leave any requests or thoughts in the comment section below and you guys are so good at that. And I really, I truly do read every single comment that you guys write. And I have this notebook that is just full of ideas and I try to write down as many as I possibly can. And generally the ones that get requested the most are ones that I tend to try to produce. And then I kind of watch past videos and the videos that get the most views and likes and comments and shares and things like that are videos that I know that you guys are excited about and so I want to produce those types of videos. Um, to answer your other part of your question is how to grow as a smaller channel. Um, one way is to do collaborations and I'm thinking about doing a video on this topic in more detail um, because I have a lot of you guys asking how do I do collabs and and what you know What's the deal with collaborations? Um, my biggest suggestion is to find a channel that is similar to yours, both in the content that you create and the size. You want to try to collaborate with a video channel that not only can they benefit you, but you can benefit them. You both help each other out. So I personally try to find video channels that have content that I think you would be interested in and ones that I think that their subscribers would be interested in in mine as well. So, so make sure to take into consideration both content and size. Hippos are the best. Ask, what is your favorite thing to just sit down and draw for a while? Well, first let me say your username is awesome. And if I'm just going to sit down and just mindlessly doodle, it's usually always faces. I love drawing faces. Lisa Draw Stuff asks, have you ever had artist block? Yes, I get that. I think every artist has it to some degree, um, a lack of motivation. I actually have several videos where I talk about where to find inspiration and how to overcome artist block, but really it's just not fighting it, getting out, doing something different, and that usually helps me to get over artist block. The Blue Paintbrush asks, what is my favorite color? And that is like such a hard question to answer because I love so many different colors. But uh, currently, and for the last little while, my favorite color has been purple, but I love purples, blues, and greens kind of mixed together. Um, a lot of you guys have asked how old I am. So in October, I will be turning 39 years old. Cal's Rule 1667 asks, what part of drawing is the most difficult? Backgrounds, main focus, details, etc." Um, I think that I think it differs completely with each artist, but for me personally, um, things that are man-made are the hardest things for me to draw. If it has to have a precise line or has a lot of hyper detail that has to be super precise, I find that just really challenging, especially if it's something that I haven't researched, like race cars. I get asked all the time to do race cars or motorcycles, and I'm not really, I don't know a lot about them, so I just feel like I wouldn't be able to draw them very well. 
Unipusheen asks, what is my favorite piece of art? So my all-time favorite piece of art is the Galaxy Owl painting that I did. The second piece is probably my Eyes of Blue. And the third one is probably a tie between the last two pieces that I just finished, which is Alluring Darkness and Fairy Queen. So Jenna Finhoffenhoffenhoff. Sorry, I can't pronounce the last part. We'll just say Jenna. Jenna asked me, what age did you start taking art seriously? I've always loved drawing. I drew all the time from when I was three years old on, just drew, 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 drew all the time. But I really seriously started taking a look at it when I was about 11 and then worked on it for quite a while until I was about 17 and then kind of fell away from art for a little while and then probably when I was about 25, 26, really got serious about um, focusing on it. So for probably about the last 10 years have been really pushing myself, but never ever totally gave up drawing. I've always been drawing and painting, but the last 10 years have been the, probably the most serious that I have in my art journey. Cloudhead asks, waffles or pancakes? Mmm, I think waffles right now, if they're not overcooked. I like, I don't want them soggy, but I don't want them so hard they like hurt my mouth to eat. But if it's a, if it's a good made waffle, I love waffles. Artemis160 asks, what was the first drawing I ever sold? And I think I shared this in one of my videos, um, but I was 17 years old and I went to a local park in Spokane, Washington, where I lived at the time. And I was drawing the clock tower that is in Riverfront Park. And I kind of drew a little crowd and I was so excited because there's people watching me draw. And it was the first time I'd ever really drawn in public like that before. So it was kind of exciting. And then after I got finished drawing, this family walked up and asked if I sold my drawings, if I would sell them that one. And I was just floored that someone actually wanted to buy my art. So I said yes, and they asked how much I would sell it. I didn't want them to say no, so I said $2. And I sold <laughs> a piece of my art that I had spent probably three or four hours working on for $2. And I never have regretted it. It was the most exciting art sale I've ever done. Several of you guys have asked me, how did I get started on YouTube? And if you want the full rundown of not just my YouTube journey, but kind of how I got started in art my, my whole life, I have a Draw My Life video, which goes into a little bit more detail about this. But the really short answer was, I was an art teacher for a group of homeschooled kids and was teaching a weekly lesson. And every once in a while they would miss a lesson. So I would record the lesson and put it on my YouTube channel for them to kind of catch up with. And I'd only did it just a couple of times and I noticed that uh, more people than I have in my class was watching the videos and leaving comments and requests. And so I thought, oh, that'd be kind of fun. And so I just began just randomly. I didn't even have a set schedule, but would produce um, just videos like every one month or so. And that's kind of how it all got started. Alex Juliet asks, what feeling does art give you? Calmness, excitement, peacefulness. It really depends on the piece that I am creating. Um, if it's an intense piece, it usually my pieces have some sort of an emotion attached to them. So I can look at pretty much any piece that I have done and tell you the emotion that I was feeling when I created that piece. Artie Wolfie asks, what is my favorite Disney movie? So the Disney movie I have the most history with that I just adore um, will always and forever be The Little Mermaid. But I do have a really soft spot for Tangled. I love that story. I love the characters in that movie. I also have a really soft spot for Aladdin. I love the movie Aladdin. That movie played a really important part in my life. So again, if you want more information on that, I would suggest watching the Draw My Life video. So that's about it for questions today. I know I have a ton more that you guys asked, um, but I didn't want to make this video too long as well. If you enjoyed this video and want to check out some of my other videos, I'll leave a link to a couple of playlists in the description box below. You can binge watch Art on the Cart. Well, thank you guys so much for hanging out with me, and until next time, God bless you guys, and we'll see you later. Bye-bye!